Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series on introduction to kinematics and mechanisms. In uh, today's lecture we will discuss about inversions of double slider crank chain. So double slider crank chain is obtained from single slider crank chain by replacing one of the turning pairs in single slider crank chain. It consists of two revolute pairs and two prismatic pairs. And one more uh, significant characteristics of uh, double slider crank chain is that two adjacent pairs are always the like pairs. So, uh, so you can see here I have shown double slider crank chain which consists of two revolute pairs formed by link number three with link number 4 and link number 2 and both these revolute pairs are adjacent to each other now link number 1 forms sliding pair with link number 4 and link number 2 so these two sliding pairs or two prismatic pairs are adjacent to each other So double slider crank chain consists of four links, two revolute pairs and two prismatic pairs or two sliding pairs. So it is also called as 2R2P mechanism. Now in order to obtain the first inversion, link number one is fixed. Okay. Or we can say that the link with two prismatic pairs is fixed. Now as per the numbering which we have employed, link number one is having two prismatic pairs. One prismatic pair is formed with link number two and another prismatic pair is formed with link number four. So when we fix such link, that is link forming two prismatic pairs, link number one in our case, we get first inversion. Now by changing the shape of the first link, we get the elliptical trammel. Link number 1 has been converted in the form of slotted link, which forms prismatic pair with link number 4 and link number 2. And inside this slotted link, link number 4 will slide in this vertical guide and link number 2 will slide in this horizontal guide and when this sliders slide inside these guides link number 3 will act as crank it will rotate and any point on link number 3 except the midpoint will move along an elliptical path and so this is called as elliptical trammel so here it is shown any point except the center point of this yellow link will move along an elliptical path and hence it is called as elliptical trammel so here is link 1 is fixed link 2 is slider link 4 is slider and link 3 is crank two adjacent pairs pair formed by link number 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 are turning pairs and other two adjacent pairs form between link number 1 and 2 and 1 and 4 are sliding pairs. This is the characteristics of double slider crank chain. Now next, to obtain the second inversion, link number 2 is fixed. Or we can say that a link with a revolute pair and a prismatic pair is fixed. Which is the such link? Link number 2. Link number 2 has one revolute pair with link number 3 and it forms one prismatic pair with link number 1. So when we fix such link, that is link number 2, we will get second inversion. Similarly, link number 4 also forms one revolute pair with link number 3 and one prismatic pair with link number 1. So when we fix link number 4, we will get the same kind of inversion. So for a double slider crank chain, 
second inversion and fourth inversion are same which is obtained by fixing one of these slider blocks okay. let us uh, suppose that link number two is fixed so we have fixed this slider link number two here we have fixed link number two this was the slider we have fixed it link number three will act as crank so it will rotate link number three will rotate Link number 3 is connected to link number 4, okay, which is again the slider. So 3 is connected to 4, which is the slider. 4 is connected to 1 using a prismatic pair. So this 4, link number 4, slider is connected to link number 1. Okay. This is link number 1. I am changing the shape of link number 1 and removing the fixed constraint. So this is link number 1. Now it's in the form of slotted link and it is free to move. So link number one will form a sliding pair with link number four. Okay. This slotted link is link number one, which forms a sliding pair with link number four. So slider four will, uh, four will slide in vertical direction inside the slotted link, link number one. And this link number one is again guided to translate or reciprocate in horizontal direction okay this is again guided to reciprocate in horizontal direction like this so link number four will slide in horizontal direction and link number one will slide in horizontal direction inside the fixed guides we get the same inversion after fixing link number four this is used in scotch oak mechanism so link 1 is slider link 2 is fixed link 3 is crank and link 4 is slider so this is a scotch oak mechanism this rotating link is link number 3 which is acting as crank this white color link is link number four. This is this link, link number four, which is sliding in vertical direction inside this yellow link, which is link number one. And this yellow link slides inside this fixed guide. Okay. So this is scotch oak mechanism. Now inversion number 3 which is obtained by fixing link number 3. Now instead of link number 1 or 2 or 4 we fix this link, link number 3 and again change the shape of this link, link number 1. Okay, change the shape of link number 1 to get inversion number 3 so like this approximately we change the shape of link number 1 and fix link number 3 so this is how we'll get inversion number 3 now we can say that link with two revolute pairs is fixed when link with two revolute pairs is fixed we get inversion number 3 so here link number 3 with two revolute pairs is fixed so here is one revolute pair here is one revolute pair and this is link number three which is fixed now this is link number four this is link number two and this is link number one according to our nomenclature so when we fix this coupler link with two revolute pairs which we have numbered as link number three we get third inversion in which link number two the slider and link number four another slider will rotate about the fixed axis attached to this fixed link okay link number two will rotate about this pivot point and link number four will rotate about this pivot point which are fixed with link number three so when slider four and slider two rotates inside the slotted link one they will slide with respect to the slotted link in horizontal and vertical direction respectively and they will cause this slotted link to rotate as a whole 
and the center of rotation of this slotted link 1 will be the midpoint of link number 3. Okay. This is used in Oldham's coupling. This is link number 2. Okay, link number 2. This is slider board block rotating with respect to link number 3. Okay, axis of link number 2 about which it rotates is lies on fixed link, link number 3. Similarly, link number 4 rotates about the axis fixed to the link number 3. So, this is link number 4 which rotates. This is not link number 4. This is link number 4 which rotates about this axis fixed to link number 3 which is fixed. And link number 1 which is in the form of slotted disc slides with respect to 4 and 2. So this intermediate link is link number 1 which is engaged with link number 2 and link number 4 using slots. So while link number 2 and link number 4 rotates, link number 1 will rotate as well as slide with respect to link number 1 and 4 in the slots. In this case, speed of input and output shafts are same. Okay, speed of input and output shafts are the same. But speed of intermediate member that is link number one the speed of rotation of link number one is twice the speed of rotation of input or output link so this is old arms coupling link number two which is rotating about the fixed axis link number four is also rotating about the fixed axis and both these axes are separated by some offset distance. Link number 1 is paired with link number 2 and link number 4 using slots. So while link number 2 rotates, it will rotate link number 4 through link number 1. And during this, link number 1 will also slide inside the slots on link number 2 and link number 4. Thank you.